a new report by TRT World Research Center sheds some insights on U.S. lethal operations in Somalia. It explores the use of U.S. armed drones and counter-terrorism raids there. Speaking to witnesses on the ground, our team of researchers found that civilians are often targeted in populated areas. The U.S. government says it's aware of the attacks, but claims there are no civilian casualties. Today, we have on the panel uh, two of our uh, distinguished researchers. Uh, first of all, Khalil Diwan. Uh, he's an expert on conflict and uh, terrorism. And with us as well, uh, Abdel Noor Daher, who is uh, an expert and analyst on uh, the Horn of Africa affairs. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start with you, Khalil. Uh, we know that this drone warfare has been going on uh, for quite some time. Uh, what triggered your interest in uh, producing this report? Sure. Well, first of all, you see um, AFRICOM, which oversees U.S. operations in the region, but also in Somalia. Uh, they claim that there was only two civilians from U.S. lethal operations in the last two years, which was very alarming to us when we first started planning this investigation. Um, and it was very difficult to swallow, to be quite frank. And then following that, we've had uh, President Donald Trump, who revoked an executive order which requires annual reporting on civilian casualties um, on an annual basis, um, including other departments such as the CIA. Um, this paves the way for greater secrecy um, to really hide or in fact not um, be transparent enough with regards to the data on civilians or even combatants killed. Um, one of our witness testimonies called Sadia, she said, we heard it coming, i.e. drones. Um, this was actually the basis of our investigation. Um, and from that point on, we made a decision that we must give a voice to the voiceless. And uh, from your side, uh, Abdul Noor, you have been on the ground, you have been uh, doing a lot of research uh, in Somalia on the ground. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the cases that you encountered there? Well, sure. We have uh, three cases covered by our report now. We also have uh, seven others which are on the file, on the record. And coming to these three uh, cases, which uh, all of them took place in, 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 in between January and February of this year, uh, they took place in, in Lao Shabila region in southern Somalia, a region which neighbors the capital of Somalia, Mogadishu. And uh, we have three uh, witness testimonies. Uh, first, uh, an old woman called an Abshuro. Abshuro when I met her in a refugee camp, in an IDB camp, sorry, in a displaced, uh, internal displaced uh, camp in Somalia, she told me that in the middle of the night, the U.S. drones, the U.S. military drones, which she said f were flown from Balidogle Air Base, which is near also to the area where the, uh, uh, the attack took place, attacked them in, in her village. Seven people were killed, including three of her relatives, her son, her son-in-law, and her nephew. Uh, subsequently, in the following morning, she left all and with all other uh, and, and people who used to live in that village. They left to the whole area, and now they're in, a, in an IDB camp in Somalia. She said they've been targeted by the U.S. drones illegally and wrongfully, and uh, they want justice from the Somali government, from the international community, and from uh, human rights organizations. We also have another case from uh, 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 Janale, which is also in the same neighborhood, Fatima. Fatima lost uh, uh, and, and, and her, her daughter and her two grandchildren. She does not know if they are alive now or not. And uh, we spoke her a couple of times. Last time we spoke to her in June this year, she said she does not know whether they are alive or not. The last point is, the last contact is Sadia, which my colleague just said that she had it was coming. Uh, Sadia lost her sister, and uh, now she lives also in a, in a displaced refugee camp in Somalia. Mm. Khalil, can you uh, help us put these things into context? What, what, what is the, the, the actual the consequences and the, the actual utilization within the war on terror? I mean, what, is, what, what can we tell our audience? Sure. Well, you see the, the war on terror following 9-11. Um, since 2002, in fact, there has been U.S. lethal operations being conducting around the, the globe, effectively. In Pakistan, you have Somalia, you have Yemen, you have Afghanistan, Libya, recently, uh, Syria and Iraq as well. But there's been some um, unprecedented 
uh, civilian casualties. Um, so this has gone on for a very long time, and we find that the use of drones and use of nighttime raids has been taking place uh, where there would be kill capture operations or um, a fix and find operation uh, and effectively a targeted killings. These things happen now uh, with or without consent. There's a, a lot of muddy waters around with regards to states and what their position is on it. There's on several bases there are conflicting reports what the actual state in question, um, where they stand with regards to consent with the use of force in these countries. Um, and at the end of the day, it's the victims who are you know, left without any recourse or access to justice. And this is something which is um, you know, a very stark issue to really that we're discussing here. And just to put this into context, um, just alone for with, in terms of drone strikes alone in Pakistan, Somalia and Yemen, some 12,000 individuals have been reportedly killed. This is far too much now. Mm. There are several arguments that drones are um, you know, precision-led and they do not kill um, civilians. For example, in Africa, and they, they claim that only two were killed in the last two years. Well, this is very difficult to believe. Um, and, I, and I think just generally the war on terror has sidestepped traditional legal frameworks of international human rights law, international the law of armed conflict or international humanitarian law. Um, the US's interpretation is very much in, in its own. For instance, they, they go after individuals who they believe is a military aged male and they believe that that's justifiable. Uh, this is completely, um, you know, a, a, a completely um, broad brushed uh, contradiction to international law. And uh, Abdin Noor, taking the point made by uh, Khalil, uh, how is the impact on these uh, targeted killings, on these drone strikes on the civilian population in, in, in Somalia? Can you tell us more about this? Well, uh, for the last three years since the U.S. President Donald Trump was elected, the U.S. Uh, rates the drone attacks in Somalia has increased. And this has created uh, a lot of like problems. Uh, uh, now what we have seen is that there is a new set of uh, internal displaced camps exclusively displaced from uh, these, the increase of the iron strikes in Somalia. If you ask them, when, when, when I met one of them, she said, now we're living in a refugee camp, in an uh, internal displaced camp in Somalia, and majority of the people, almost all of them, displaced by the drone strikes. Uh, traditionally, uh, people used to, disp to, 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 uh, to run from conflicts between the Somali army and the Somali security forces against the, the Al-Shabaab and other, the other terrorist groups. But now you have this new dimension of the conflict which is creating displacement in Somalia. And this shows the magnitude of the problem in Somalia. The country has already in a, in a, in a problem. It has been in a conflict for more than two decades. And this is also an additional layer of a conflict in the country. Uh, the drones are destroying the, the livelihoods, the, the houses, the, uh, and the farms of these people who are, who are like uh, villages. They live in a rural areas. They don't know. Now they're just sitting begging international community to give them aid. So, yeah, it's impacting them a lot. Okay, um, this is very interesting. But, uh, Khalil, can you uh, give us more about the difficulties on reporting uh, this kind of uh, issues and especially linked with drone warfare in, in, in many countries and especially uh, Somalia. Yeah, sure. Well, you see, uh, in this particular context in um, Somalia, uh, we didn't have the liberty of just accessing open source intelligence and several different platforms and social media or, uh, or designated apps. Uh, we had to rely on witness testimonies. So, for instance, uh, Somali individuals on the ground, they don't, or population, they don't necessarily have access to internet in Al Shabaab controlled areas or outside of that. So we couldn't rely on, for instance, a YouTube video to show us graphic content or a tweet to notify that the strike took place or others were talking about it. Um, we had to look deeper than that. So, and, and we couldn't use satellite imagery to look at the impact of a strike in a post strike uh, situation. Um, or craters or, or perhaps even other damage. So it was very difficult in that sense. Um, also our witnesses, um, when we were actually interviewing them on the ground, they were very hesitant to talk very, very publicly about this. And I think this is a very important point to make. They have their own constraints. So it's easy for uh, journalists to come to Somalia 
foreign journalists with their, the camera crew and so on and so forth, but actually they have a complete different uh, local dynamic on the ground, whereas uh, Al-Shabaab, they, they feel a threat from them to just speak out about this. So we had to navigate all of this terrain just to bring about our witnesses to the table. So Abdel Noor, you have been on the ground. How difficult was it to uh, gather testimonies from the ground? It was very difficult, first of all. Uh, it's difficult, these people, to trust you because there are too many socioeconomic security factors. Al-Shabaab, which control or have an influence where the areas where these people live or come from, uh, ban the use of <clears throat> talking to social or to, to media or foreign journalists. So this, even if they give you an interview, they think they, they're going to be a reprisal against them or their relatives or the people living in that area. And again, uh, people have less uh, experience relating to drones or military uh, aircraft. So they always use this kind of diarat or plane just to classify uh, the, the kind of the raid they, they see. It's also very difficult for to, to if you ask them to show an evidence about the uh, about the event, because Al Shabaab does not also allow them to use smartphones or and, and internet, so it's very difficult to get the, uh, the, the 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 evidence of the things that happened, the attacks of the. Uh, but it's at the end of the day, once you start, we create the trust and the bond between them, they will be happily speaking with you. So that was the challenge we faced during doing this. And uh, back to you, Khalil. Uh, there have been many uh, reports from different NGOs, uh, reputable NGOs, about drone uh, warfare uh, across many countries. Uh, can you give us an overview about their findings and, and how is this report that uh, TRT World Research Center has produced uh, fit in? Sure. I mean, the, you know, throughout the history of drone warfare and also asymmetric warfare led by the US and other states, uh, there has been several types of reporting by journalistic outfits uh, such as The Intercept and also international human rights law organizations like Human Rights Watch and also Amnesty International. So Intercept, for example, they looked at uh, drone warfare and they also looked at raids, which is very controversial. And they looked at in, into the issue of advise and assist where the US actually support operations, not just advising, but actually on the ground uh, where one of the soldiers were actually killed uh, and many civilians killed as well. Um, the latest report was actually by uh, Amnesty International on Somalia. They focus in middle and lower Shabeli region, uh, lower Somalia, where they found 14 credible cases of individual uh, non-combatants killed in Somalia. Now, if we cross-reference that with uh, Africans' uh, assessment that there has only been two killed in the last two years, of course, that's damning evidence. Um, I really hope that this, um, you know, this humble effort here with TRT World Research Center uh, provides some light with regards to the operations taking place specifically in Somalia. Um, I made all of the difficulties to provide this. And really, I think the, the, the ball is in our court and the burden of proof can, must come from um, Africa to really shed light on this. Transparency and accountability is now how we should move forward. Because at the end of the day, it's the civilians who bear the brunt of this and they're the ones who are asking, where do we find justice? Yes. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Abdel Noor, uh, what is the impact on, of this drone uh, warfare on the society overall? What is the political class thinking? Uh, what is the civil society thinking? Can you give us an overview? Well, first of all, the Somali government, from the perspective of the Somali government, we interviewed uh, a couple of uh, officials, a minister and a deputy minister. They, they were in the point that the U.S. raids were uh, actually helping the Somali army in defeating and deterring al-Shabaab. Uh, that is, but from, from the perspective of the people, uh, from the society, because as I told you before, the, the, the airstrikes they, is creating new kind of displacement in Somalia, and people are actually discussing this now in, in, in the local context, and they are saying, okay, we used to have uh, different uh, dynamics, but now you have uh, the US drones, which are contributing factor to the displacement. So this is uh, uh, now in, 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 the, in the local context, in the media, in the so, uh, civil society discussions, uh, and uh, uh, it's, 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 the discussions are going on in Somalia now about the drone strikes. People are, are getting used to, to discussions now. And uh, as our witnesses told us, uh, they, are, they left everything behind. And they are, they are now in Mogadishu or in the surrounding camps just to, to make a living. Okay. And uh, 
going back to the methodology, uh, Khalil, uh, can you tell us more and elaborate on the methodology used for this report? Sure, indeed. Uh, well, we went about this uh, investigation using a snowball methodology. Uh, we did that by finding our sources on the ground. Um, and then we corroborated them with regards to individuals who may have known them for the sake of uh, good character. Um, after that, we, we specifically looked at Africans press releases because they claimed that all of their strikes are actually on the website. We found that not to be the case in our end result and our conclusion. However, um, we did actually go through all of uh, 2019 press releases. Then we did our investigations on the ground, corroborated them. We really we realized there were civilian casualties where there was no civilian casualties, and in one instance, there was no reporting of an incident. I believe this is our third case. Um, and then what we did was, once we had local media reporting to corroborate and an attack took place uh, after assessing uh, the diligence of the journalism, we then put this question, these questions to Africam. Uh, in, in emails to ask them, uh, where we had a, a second round, if you like, or a second wave of difficulty with them. Um, the truth must be told. You know, we, we had several email exchanges where they would try to bat off our, uh, our investigation. Um, they, would, they would refer us back to um, the website where the press releases were, even though we initially looked at that already and put forward the dates and so on and so forth. Um, you know, and then after perhaps maybe five or six emails, we finally got around to speaking to someone about these. And they gave us, uh, we gave them ample time, to, of course, to deal with them. They, they appreciated that. And then we were getting responses. And then we really got down to investigating what happened um, to the victims. Uh, we, we have reached uh, the end of our session today. Uh, I would like to thank you, Khalil, for sharing uh, your insights with us. Sure. And uh, also, Abdul Noor, thank you very much for participating. Thank you. And uh, at the end, I would like to say thank you very much for watching us and uh, goodbye.